This is Political Forum for Wednesday, August 13th, 2014. Uh, we welcome today as our special guest, Alderman Pat Dow from Chicago's Third Ward. Uh, I'm Rod Joy, a board member here at CAN TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive call-in program that's designed to connect you directly with your elected officials. Uh, during the next 25 minutes or so, uh, we hope you'll have an opportunity to learn more about Alderman Dow. Uh, and her views on some of the challenges and opportunities facing the city. Uh, above all, this program is about promoting a culture of citizenship and civic engagement. Uh, your voice is a key part of the program. Uh, we invite your questions and your comments for Alderman Dow. Uh, please join the conversation at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Alderman Dow, welcome back to Political Forum. Very nice to be here again, Ra. Thank you for having me. I think this is the first time you and I have sat down to have a conversation. Absolutely. Look forward um, to it. So for our viewers who may be meeting you for the first time tonight, uh, what can you tell them about uh, the Third Ward? Well, I say the Third Ward is a very diverse ward. It is uh, shaped like a guitar. It's very long at the neck on the north end of the ward, um, which includes the South Loop community. Uh, starting at Roosevelt Road, going over to uh, Lakeshore Drive, and uh, West End is Clark Street. And then it comes down through uh, the Motor Row area, goes into a little part of Douglas, and takes in the majority of Bronzeville, all of Washington Park. I mean, excuse me, not all of Washington Park, all of Fuller Park, a little bit of Washington Park, and a little bit of Armour Square. And so what's changed in the third ward since the, the new uh, ward map in Chicago? Well, the, the change has been primarily an increase in the South Loop portion of my ward. We're currently in the old third ward. I went, started at 14th and State. I now start at Roosevelt Road and State. Um, the old third ward also included a large portion of the back of the yards community. I will no longer represent that community in the new remap area. Great. Uh, this past weekend, uh, we marked the 85th annual Bud Billiken mm -hmm. uh, Day Parade. Uh, I know you've been in the news recently yes. because of the parade. Uh, I, I think there were some outbursts of violence uh, related to the parade, which is one of the uh, most historic and largest parades mm -hmm. in, in our country. Uh, you've made some recommendations about things to explore maybe with the parade moving forward. What, what can you tell our viewers about Bud Billiken, what happened this past weekend, and what we might want to think about moving forward? You know, Bud Billiken is a tradition in Chicago, especially in the Bronzeville community. And uh, unfortunately, this past Saturday, we had a parade that had some uh, shooting, uh, a shooting, and, you know, several fisticuffs. Um, we sat down today with the parade organizers and uh, the police department, representatives from special events, uh, streets and sanitation, and OEMC, emergency management, traffic management, to uh, look at ways that we might make adjustments to the parade, tweak it a little bit. You know, after 85 years, you might need to take a fresh look at how the parade is operating and so that we can offer a parade that is safer for all of the families that come down to enjoy that day. Uh, so we looked at uh, issues related to uh, uh, police deployment, uh, traffic management, uh, the actions of the parade marshals, uh, tightening up the, uh, the uh, time that it takes for the parade to actually go through the parade route. Um, so that we don't have large gaps in between uh, different floats and different uh, walk and arrangements like that. Now, I know it's only been a couple of days since the parade, um, and this is a relatively new conversation about changes or modifications, but what have you heard from your constituents or from Chicagoans in response to uh, a proposal to maybe <laughs> re-examine yeah. how well, the parade is know, implemented? The media has, it's funny how the media deals with what you say. When I said perhaps we should look at shortening the parade route, they took it to mean that we should. They left out the word perhaps. So, I mean, I don't think it's uh, 
Uh, my intention is not to change the Bud Billiken parade, the nature of the parade, but to just tweak it a little bit so that it's a better parade and can go in another 85 years. Now you mentioned the media and, and one issue that's always in the news is violence and violent crime in Chicago and mm -hmm. certainly that's an issue that you've dealt with uh, as an elected official. Um, wave your magic wand and solve the violence pro problem for Chicago. What, what can we do? I need more than one magic wand, Ra. I mean, I think that this is a multi-dimensional uh, issue to address. I mean, it's not just one thing. You know, we have to deal with the lack of jobs in our communities. We have to look at uh, mentoring programs for our uh, young people. We need uh, fathers in the home and better parenting among uh, the parents that are raising these children. We need a, an educational system that is uh, uh, teaching them in a way that young people find interesting that allows them to participate globally in, in, in society. Um, you know, there's, we need more police. I mean, there are a number of ways to tackle this issue. There's no one uh, magic bullet. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we welcome tonight as our special guest, Alderman Pat Dahl from Chicago's Third Ward. Uh, we invite your questions and your comments for Alderman Dahl. Uh, please join the conversation at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, and Alderman Dow, we're still in construction season, and there are a number of infrastructure projects underway in the third ward. And what's top of mind for me is the a new transit station, I believe, at, at CERMAC. Oh, yes. Uh, it's uh, real difficult to get around at 22nd and, and State right now, and also 23rd and State and 24th and State, for that matter. Um, we have a new Green Line station being put in. Actually, it's being re-put in. It was a station there many years ago, and we're putting one back. Um, right now, we have uh, a lot of streetscaping work that's going on. We're um, also um, putting in the elements of the new station, and we hope to have that station opened up hopefully by the end of this year. Great. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are yeah, you there? Please, yeah, beam to y'all. Okay, my comment is, okay, like, when uh, uh, the, the, the guests about the violence, okay, when they only talk about gang-related, what about police-related shooting? And I don't hear the media saying that. And they, and they Rod Emanuel and Gary McCarthy and uh, Alpha Rex trying to make themselves look good. Y'all doing a good job. Uh, trying to make themselves look good. Y'all doing a good job. Well, um, I, I mean, I think one thing I believe that... Um, we should have that should happen in a better fashion is when there is a police related shooting we need to have IPRA who's the organization responsible for looking at what happened to report back to the public in a manner so that people know really what happened you know you sometimes hear that there was a police involved shooting but you never hear the um, outcome of the investigation um, and I know that they publish uh, their outcomes online in an annual report, but people don't always use the computer. People don't always read the documents. There needs to be a better way to communicate back to the community what findings uh, they have with these investigations on policemen. I think we have uh, another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi, yeah. Um, I read something online about a new TIF that they might be making in Washington Park area. Is that in your district? And if so, why do you think building that or establishing that would be necessary? I have a very small piece of that TIF. That TIF, if it was 100%, only 3% of the land mass in that TIF is in the third ward. Most of it is in the 20th ward, and it's really designed to provide uh, tools to the city of Chicago, the aldermen of that ward, to promote economic development in an area that um, needs economic development in a very bad way. And so Washington Park now is just a small portion of the third ward, is that correct? Right. My portion of Washington Park covers primarily from 51st over to 55th place, um, from King Drive to the Dan Ryan, um, but only the part uh, north of South of 55th 
to 55th place is in the TIF. And the caller mentioned uh, TIF uh, districts. Um, you also have a, a major project that's coming to the ward, the uh, XS Tennis Facility, which I think is uh, being supported by uh, TIF, TIF funds. funds, right? Can you tell our viewers a little yeah, bit I about mean, that I think, facility? I think that's an example of how TIF is used appropriately, where we're building a uh, tennis facility to uh, train people in tennis. And I know some people say, well, you know, tennis is not a sport that our community, um, African Americans, um, uh, sup you know, spends a lot of time in. in, right? But I just passed. 43rd and State Street at Metcalf Park today. I've got two tennis courts there, or four tennis courts there, and they were all filled with people playing. So we have a new facility coming in, bringing in new jobs, uh, bringing in scholarships for students to learn how to play tennis. Uh, this is a, a facility that is being uh, operated by a young African-American man named Kamal Murray, and he has uh, a proven track record of helping young people use tennis to get scholarships to take them to college. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Our special guest tonight is Alderman Pat Dowell from Chicago's Third Ward. Uh, if you care about the city, uh, we invite you to call in with your questions and your comments for Alderman Dowell. You can join the conversation at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. I believe we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I read recently that the mayor has uh, proposed a minimum wage increase. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know that he has an ordinance in. I know that there was a written report by his task force that calls for a $13 minimum, minimum wage in Chicago. Great. I think we have a, thank you for your call. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi, I sure am. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I wanted to ask the alderman to respond to a federal investigation about civil rights violations um, on two, I really in two uh, south side schools. I believe those are Diet and, and Mollison. I know that uh, the Black Automatic Caucus recently held some hearings about um, African American and selective enrollment education, which at the high school level. I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on kind of where the public schools are in terms of educating a students of color and um, what you think needs to happen or what even perhaps the alderman can do. Okay, you've got a whole lot of questions in there, Carla, lots of different moving parts. So I'm going to respond to your question regarding the uh, Federal Department of Education Civil Rights a complaint against uh, Diet High School and also Mollison Elementary School. I can't speak much for Diet High School because Diet is not in the third ward, but the charge against uh, Mollison is that Mollison, which is in the third ward, is uh, overcrowded and uh, lacks sufficient emotional and social supports for the students. Um, I think that the charges in that report are questionable, um, especially the overcrowding piece and the lack of social and emotional supports. Um, but I just got the letter a couple of days ago, or actually yesterday, when it was dropped off at my office, so I haven't really done a full in-depth analys analysis on uh, that complaint. Uh, on your point about the status of schools in Chicago, you know, I can't talk about all the schools in Chicago. I can say that in the third ward, in fact, we were talking about that this morning at the principal's breakfast organized by the Bronzeville Community Action Council, that all of our schools have improved. Um, most of our schools are not on probation anymore. We have schools that have moved from level three to level two. We've got schools that are um, moving to level one. We have uh, a new IB program in both Mollison and Mayo schools. That's the International Baccalaureate Program. We've got a new gifted uh, learning center in our ward. So I think the outlook for the schools in the third ward is bright, brighter and improving. And we have a lot more work to do, but I work closely with not only 
uh, the Bronzeville Community Action Council and parents, I work closely with the principals as well. Let's dig a little bit deeper on some of the projects that are specific to the Third Ward. Uh, I know you've been an advocate for urban uh, gardening, green spaces, community gardens, and I think you uh, have a major <coughs> initiative, uh, the Legend South Farm at 44th and Federal. What, right. can, what can you tell our viewers about that project? Right. We've been working with the uh, Legend South community and the Chicago Botanical Garden to bring a uh, more than two-acre productive farm uh, at 44th and Federal. I mean, if you go by there, you'll see rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of, uh, you know, greens, kale, carrots, uh, peas, tomatoes. They're growing everything out there. And we're having a uh, big opening and celebration of that to um, encourage people to come by on August 20th. Great. Uh, another major project that's underway is around uh, McCormick Place and in the South Loop. I think you have a convening coming up to uh, engage your constituents and community members about uh, the McCormick Place Event Center and Hotel, but what can you tell our viewers about that project? Well, we've already worked with the community around the design of the facility, around the uh, issues related to the staging of the buses, the staging of the, of the taxi cabs, about um, the location of the, the, the stadium uh, construction schedule. But one thing that we need to spend more time discussing with the community is the impact of those new uh, institutions on traffic, on parking, and on security. And so the meeting that I'm holding, and I don't have the date right in front of me, but I think it's August... 19th. 19th. Thank August you, 19th from 6.30 to yeah. 8.30. At uh, McCormick Place will be for the residents to hear uh, what the new traffic plans are, what the new parking plans are, the different focus on security, uh, new residential parking uh, recommendations, and to get feedback from those residents on the impact. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, we invite you to flex your activism muscles and call in with your questions and comments for Alderman Pat Dowell from Chicago's Third Ward. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Hey, good just, evening. Uh, just to piggyback on the, uh, on the traffic uh, uh, portion of what you just uh, talked about, uh, there's been some public meetings going on concerning North Lakeshore Drive and what to do with it. Now, uh, just a few years back, uh, you know, South Lakeshore Drive was, you know, completely redone, and it took a lot of uh, time and effort, especially for some residents down there, to to, tra to traverse that traffic. So is there any advice, and what, what can we expect in terms of, will the public actually have a say in what can happen on that North Lakeshore Drive? I am not involved in discussions on North Lakeshore Drive. Um, I, I'm not in that area. I am... Um, participating in a new task force that the mayor has uh, organized to look at traffic patterns on the south end of Grant Park um, where the potential Lucas Museum is going to be located, um, its relationship to Soldier Field, the new uh, McCormick Place Hotel, uh, the new McCormick Place uh, Stadium, the DePaul Stadium, and the impact of all of those uh, new entities and old entities in terms of traffic and the impact that that will have on the community uh, just to the east of or to the west of Lakeshore Drive. You mentioned the Lucas Museum, uh, another major project that could come to Chicago that could spell jobs and economic development is the Obama Presidential Library and Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there are multiple uh, sites that have been proposed for Chicago. Um, do you have a, a view about w if that museum comes to town, where it should be located? Well, I'm always going to say South Side, but if I had to uh, really identify a location on the South Side, I'm advocating for the area in Washington Park around 55th and State. Um, not State, 55th and King Drive. I think that the done properly um, and in partnership with the community and with institutions and organizations and churches in the area, um, in partnership with those uh, types of groups, 
this could have a tremendous economic impact on not only Washington Park, but also on the Bronzeville community, the Fuller Park community, Hyde Park, um, all the surrounding areas. We talked a little bit about development in the South Loop. Uh, let's talk about some economic development uh, a little bit further south uh, in your ward around 47th Street. I think you played a, an active role in helping to bring the Bronzeville artist lofts uh, to the area. Talk a little bit about that project and some of the development in and around 47th Street. Well, you know, 47th Street is the heart of our commercial quarter. Um, and I was really, really pleased and delighted that uh, Francis and uh, Andre Bichard made a commitment to 47th Street to bring their fantastic gallery to that area, which is already enlivened in the, the location. Um, also working with Lee Reed and uh, Bob Farrell from uh, Madison Construction, we've been able to put in an artist loft, so we've got 17 uh, affordable um, apartments for artists. I mean, you have to be a bona fide artist to live there, and so we're hoping to spur economic development through the work of those artists. Just tonight, on the corner of 47th and King Drive, we're celebrating Bronzeville Nights, where we're highlighting um, art and culture and the entrepreneurial spirit. And we're already beginning to see new investment on 47th Street. We've seen people try to spruce up their existing real estate. We've got um, Sh Chef Rome, who is going to be opening Peach's Restaurant on the corner of 47th and King Drive uh, shortly. Uh, to the east of us in the 4th Ward, we have new shops and lofts coming at the corner of 47th and Cottage Grove. So I th And on the west end, the Rosenwall is going to be redeveloped starting in uh, November. We're already doing work there now. So I'm excited about the future of 47th Street. Another park project, I think, is uh, Low Park uh, and Fieldhouse. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I think you have an event coming up later this month on August 24th. Right. That's like, you know, one of the reasons that I enjoy being alderman, when you can do something to really improve a small area of the city where there was a need for uh, a larger field house. Uh, this field house that was there, the existing field house was really small. So we built on an addition and we're cutting the ribbon on that on the 24th. Great. We only have a few minutes left okay. in our program. Um, I think you have a background in community development and urban planning and I'd love for you to say a few words about how your background uh, in urban development, community development has helped you as an alderman mm -hmm. and what motivated you to get involved in public life and in politics? Well, my parents were um, very involved locally. Uh, my mother was very involved in the church. My father was very involved in my school. I was dragged to a lot of meetings with them when I was a little girl. And I always wanted to be involved in giving back to the community. So that's how I got involved. I have a passion for helping people. I have a passion for being able to make something happen. Not that I want the credit for it, but I want to be able to drive by something and know I had something to do with that. I had something to do with that. And I've improved this person's life. I've helped this person. And that's what motivates me. Um, my background as a planner helps me to uh, know how to go get the resources to get certain things done. Uh, knowing that you just can't focus on the big projects. You have to take care of the little things like uh, the infrastructure, trimming the trees, um, making sure that uh, if a person has a problem with a utility company that you can work those things out. So it's about having a holistic approach to um, developing a community and not putting your eggs all in one basket. Great. Uh, we're about out of time for uh, viewers that didn't get an opportunity to call in tonight, uh, if they want to reach you or have questions or, or want to reach out, uh, what advice would you give them? Well, the best thing to do is to call me at 773-373-9273. That's the office number. Um, we have a website, which is www.dowell4thirdward.com. And uh, you can reach me by email. I do read all my emails at ward03 at cityofchicago.org. Terrific. Uh, in order for our democracy to thrive, we need an informed and engaged citizenry. 
So we'd like to thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'd like to thank you for calling in, and we'd like to invite you to join us next week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the next edition of Political Forum. Alderman Dow, thanks for being here. Thank you very much, Rock.